The purpose of this short video is to explain what an effective meeting looks like so that you can understand how using the Meeting Advantage tool can make a big difference for your team and your organization. I found that one of the best things you can do before your meeting even begins is something that I call a lightning round. That's simply when you ask everyone on the team to take no more than 30 seconds, 10 is probably enough, to simply tell the rest of the team the primary activities or projects that they think they'll be working on that week. This simply provides everyone with a quick snapshot of what is going on. Here at the table group, we do this before every weekly meeting, and it gives us a little context or perspective about the realities that we're dealing with before we dive into the more formal part of our meeting. Now, you're not going to find anything about the lightning round on the Meeting Advantage tool because it's just a simple, quick behavioral exercise that you can do before using the tool itself. And I mean it when I say that it should take no more than three minutes for a reasonably sized team to do. Okay, now we start our meeting, and we do it by taking a couple of minutes to review our organization's clarity, which is nothing more than reviewing the answers to the first five critical questions that define what an organization stands for and wants to accomplish. These include why the company exists, how people are expected to behave, what the company actually does, what its basic strategy is, and finally, and most relevant to the meeting itself, what is the most important priority for the team and the organization right now. The reason we need to review these things before going deeper is to make sure that every conversation we have and every decision we make is consistent with what we've already decided we want to be and do as a company. Without doing this, it's easy to make tactical, opportunistic decisions that might seem right in the moment, but which violate the agreed upon identity and direction of the organization. Reviewing clarity is literally nothing more than taking one or two minutes to read aloud the five answers to the questions I just mentioned. But I've learned in my work with my clients and in my own firm that those are a critical two minutes. So once we've done that, we can now dive into the meat of our meeting, if you will, the most dynamic and critical part, which involves assessing our progress around the most important objectives and figuring out what we need to accomplish during the rest of our meeting. Assessing progress against our objectives is one of the most valuable and engaging parts of using the meeting advantage because it involves the leadership team making qualitative decisions by assigning a color to each of its key objectives. Things that aren't going well, you'll probably assign a red or an orange. Things that are going really well will probably get a green. Somewhere in the middle will be a yellow. Now, as simple or rudimentary as that may seem in theory, in reality, it creates the context for some of the most informative and aligning conversations that happen among a leadership team. It's literally the means for getting everyone on the same page every week around the reality of what they're facing. And it works in small companies and multinational corporations alike. The other benefit of doing this color assessment up front, and this is a really important part of the meeting advantage approach, is that the team can now identify the most critical topics to cover during the rest of the meeting. That's right, by waiting until we arrive at the meeting to create an agenda, by waiting until we've reviewed our clarity and our progress, we ensure that we're gonna spend our time and energy exclusively on the issues that really matter. That may be the single most important part of transforming our meetings. This is key because when we arrive at our meeting with a predetermined agenda, we often find ourselves wasting time talking about the wrong issues or spending too much time on a topic or project that really isn't critical to the near-term success of the organization. We've all experienced this, sitting in a meeting and wondering why are we talking about this? Okay, at this point in our meeting, we're just 10 or 15 minutes into it, but we've accomplished a few critical things. We know what everybody's working on generally or what they think they're working on. We've reviewed our clarity and we've created an agenda based on the reality of our progress against our primary objectives. And the process of doing those things is actually really interesting and engaging. Most importantly, we're now ready to have the right conversations addressing the near-term issues that are facing the company. Now, most likely you're gonna start by talking about the objectives that you assessed as red, orange, or yellow, because those are the issues that need the most time and attention. You'll identify specific actions that the team needs to take to make a red issue yellow or a yellow issue green. And you'll capture the key commitments and tasks within the meeting advantage tool. What you're not going to do is take detailed notes of every word spoken at the meeting but rather capture the most important agreements and actions. Based on my experience in my own company and working with clients, you're going to find yourself getting derailed from time to time when someone raises an issue that is just too big and too complicated and frankly, too strategic to be addressed during your weekly meeting. This happens all the time. The problem is that these issues are often really interesting and team members are more than willing to talk about them rather than staying focused on the more tactical near-term issues. 
Now, when this happens, we have to have the discipline to stop and call out that issue for what it is, a strategic topic that will require a separate meeting, a meeting where there's more and adequate time and attention, possibly even a few hours for a single critical topic. It's important to table these strategic discussions, not only to give them adequate time, but to keep our weekly meetings focused on our tactical near-term objectives. Okay, at the end of our meetings, or toward the end of our meeting, I should say, which will probably vary from 45 minutes to a couple of hours, depending on the organization, the team needs to take a few minutes to clarify the decisions that were just made and to agree on what each member will communicate to the people in their departments or organizations. This is a critical step in creating a healthy organization, getting leadership team members clear and aligned about what they will say when the meeting is over. Over the years, I've seen so many well-intentioned teams leave meetings with different understandings of what was accomplished and agreed upon, and thereby they create confusion and frustration among the men and women they are trying to lead. Now, there is one part of the meeting advantage tool that we haven't discussed and that may not be necessary to review during a given weekly meeting. You'll find it at the bottom of the tool, and it's simply a basic roster of the members of your leadership team, along with their respective personality types, roles, and focused areas for personal development. Again, this is not a formal part of the meeting process, but it can be really helpful in managing team dynamics and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of team members as they pertain to assignments and decisions. Okay, that's a fairly quick overview of what a weekly team meeting will look like and how the Meeting Advantage tool can help you stay focused and clear about what matters most. Now, you'll find that the tool is remarkably simple, no doubt, but that by creating the right context and framework for meetings, it can transform one of the most painful and frustrating parts of corporate life into something that is engaging, productive, and most important of all, essential to making your organization healthy. Good luck.